So APEC have kicked off their incursions today. Yes, Thursday, the 1st of June, and incursions is back. For more information, I would highly recommend after this video, checking out this one and see what it's all about. Yes, I'm advertising another content creator on my channel, but it won't be for the first time. So, go check it out after this. But today, we're going to talk about how to create an alliance and whether it's actually, my opinion, worth actually being in an alliance. Also, yeah, about the ranks as well. We'll add that in as well. Anyway, I'm Admiral Pegasus. This is Star Trek Fleet Command. Let's hop on over. guys and welcome back to the channel yes it is the evening here in the uk at the time of recording this video and apac have started incursions as i mentioned in the announcement but we're not going to talk about incursions because i will leave you to go check out rev juice's video on that particular one what we're going to talk about today is creating an alliance now some of you will have noticed on my live stream on tuesday i'm no longer in alliance no i'm not going to get into the details of why i left but i did so it's going to give me the perfect opportunity to do this video. But not only are we going to talk about um, how to create an alliance, we're also going to talk about the benefits of actually being in an alliance and whether or not it's actually worth it. Because there are a lot of players out there who pretty much are going it alone. If we actually just take a look at the alliance board uh, um, powers, and if we actually just scroll through... Um, here, we've got a few ones here, so um, dead alliances, a few with twos and threes, five, or some more ones. So there are a lot of small alliances and a lot of players pretty much going it on their own. Now, I know for a fact that these two have been going, these two alliances have been on the go for quite some time as a single alliance. And as you can see below me, it's telling, you, telling me to join an alliance and earn some fantastic rewards. Yeah, okay. So, now, what are those fantastic rewards? Well, how about we jump over to the events tab and actually just show you what we're on about. Now, as you can see, we've got Apex started, but we've just finished off Crucible of War. Now, I'm going to I'm not going to lie, this one has absolutely massive benefits for you being in a very act well, in a reasonably active alliance, and that's in the form of this milestone behind me and basically what you're going to be getting in this milestone is you're going to get some premium recruit tokens and as you get higher up that changes to recruit token you're going to get 300 alliance credits for every single step so it's 300 every time there's 10 steps that's 3,000 alliance credits and then also you're going to get these alliance trophies as well which you will be able to use and take over to the alliance store yes alliances have stores so and if we just jump up here just to show you ultra recruit tokens, you actually do get a fair few. But this first step is a ball lake to actually hit. I tried it once. It was going to take me three days constantly farming for 20 hours a day. Yeah, minimum. So basically a quick four hour nap in between. But unfortunately, I'm a very busy person in real life. So I don't have time to spend 20 hours. So this is absolutely one of those big gems of why you should be in Lions. However, this uh, event also has a downside. Yes, that. Now, if you're actually in the 30s or lower, that's actually very reasonable. But when you start getting up, you're thinking, really? Let's just take that top spot. So the blue tokens are the 1 million tokens. That's, that's fine. That is short of a tier 6 rep maximum repair for my Valdor with all the savings and efficiency cost uh, researches involved. 23 million more. Yeah, all right then. That's probably a couple of hits on the Valdor. So not really worth it in my opinion. And that's the problem with a lot of Alliance-based events. They're pretty crap. And another, cr and another perfect example... 
if we scroll back, if we can actually get the screen to work. Here we go. Uh, okay, so Faction Hunt's not on. I thought Faction Hunt was on today. Uh, it must be just that hostile SMS. Um, but Faction Hunt's another one where the, to me, my personal opinion, the Faction Hunt um, ALB, the Alliance Leaderboard, is not very well paid out. The Alliance Leaderboard for Apex event, on, which was originally a monthly event, wasn't very worth. I'm glad they've actually removed it from Apex and just basically giving you the SLB, which I've yet to join, because we I will be doing a load of these over the next 24 hours. So we'll put that in. And then obviously two SMSs as well. So just things to bear in mind. But other benefits for being in the Lions basically is um, the Lions Starbase for one, which we can't show you currently because, yeah, not got access to that tab yet. Um, but of course, everyone knows about the Alliance Starbase and... To be perfectly honest, it's a glorified miner at the minute, but when Scopely actually finally get round to actually sorting it out, we should actually, you know, have a decent star base. Hopefully, touch wood, but who knows. There's also the community as well. Now, we all know that Galaxy Chat can be very toxic and full of um, big drama queens and snowflakes. Yes. And a lot of people saying some very nasty things. So maybe you don't want to interact with that. As you can see up the top there, I've actually got a lines chat up. Yes, I don't have anything in the lines chat yet. So there. So the only place that I w want to talk to anybody is Galaxy Chat. Now I can use the S uh, the uh, private, but the problem is, as my game does, I was actually chatting to somebody only yesterday. Yeah, that's gone already. But so obviously you can go into Galaxy. Now I'm not going to show you my Galaxy Chat because I don't. I can't be bothered with it usually, but. If you don't want to talk to people, being in lines on your own can actually have a slight benefit. But we'll see. Another thing is also going to be alliance helped when it comes to things like this. Now, obviously, your alliances are based on levels, which we'll cover just later. But you will get helps towards all your constructions and your researches. Not to mention, also, all repairs to those ships down there. So that is also a big benefit because it does actually help save you some time and it ultimately saves you cost of speed ups and it saves you a cost of latinum. But most notably, it also saves some time. Now, researching um, speed time efficiency for research and construction is also a massive help. So don't forget to go and head over to your research trees and make sure you complete all them. Uh, the next one is also Amadas. Now, this is a big thing. Because, obviously, if you're not in an Amada, it looks like my scrolling is not going to work on my screen again. Oh, now it is. But if we actually go into heat... Okay, so... Okay, so what's what's going on here? Okay, so not going to work. So now I'm going to refresh the game. Okay, so the game's back up now, as you can see, we're just actually coming into my base. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump back to show you Amadas quickly. Yes, very quickly. So let's just um, get to a Cardassian space. We'll look at this system. We don't need to uh, actually take a ship to a system. Scroll out a little bit and we'll proceed and we'll have a look at this Amada. Now, if I wanted to start this Amada, not being in the Alliance, again, I'm going to click on here. Join Alliance. I'm not in an alliance at the minute. I'm Billy No Mates. I'm on my own. But if I wanted to start this Amada, yeah, I can. I have to join an alliance. So, yes, I could cl click that. So, yeah. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to actually how to create an alliance. If you don't want to go join another alliance, you can create your own alliance. So, you can either click that button or you can click this one down here. Yes, this is your alliance button. This is your big button for when you are in an alliance. This is the one that you actually need to, basically, my personal opinion, is keep an eye on on a daily basis because there are things in there which will be a massive help. So if we click on there, we're going to be presented with this. Now, for those of you who remember long, long time ago when we first started the game, around Ops 3, we had a particular mission which asked us to join an alliance. Yeah. Now, 
There are two types of alliance. There's an open alliance and there's a private alliance. Hence the reasons them over there. Now, the ones that actually clearly say join, they are open alliances. So basically what we can do is we can actually look at these and we'll click on this solo guy and we could actually join their... Oh, there's actually two of them in it now. We could actually join this alliance, which is what I've literally just done. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. So, now, if you want to leave an alliance, here's a quick one. Now, I won't actually plan on putting this until later. Click on this, on the settings, click on alliance, and it tells you, you've got an eight-hour cooldown before you can rejoin this alliance. Whoopsie. Shouldn't have done that. It's gone up to two because of me. Now, that will appear in his alliance chat that I joined and left. So, I'll probably get a message later on. So, just be careful when you click on that join. You will automatically join that alliance. However, if you don't wish to... Um, if you don't have that, you can. if you click on the private one, it will give you this option. Now, it does say join alliance, but ideally, what you will need to do is message the Admiral. Yes, this little gold symbol is the Admiral. He's in charge of this alliance, and you can ask him, can I come and join your alliance? Then it's up to them whether they want to do. But this is a private alliance. So basically, yes, you can view a lot of stuff. Which, like, if you click on that little button there, you can view the number of um, players in the alliance. You can also check by um, rank. You can check by the number of contributions issued. Why you'd actually want to know that about other alliances, I don't know. Or the power of the number of players in the alliance. And what we'll do is we'll just have a quick look at a um, slightly higher one. This one's a, an older alliance in on my server. But it's got a fair few, so just watch how things change. So here you go, here's your contributions, and here is your power based on the stats over the side there. Now, if you click on this button, you'll be displayed all the ranks. As you can see, we have five different ranks in game. Yay! Ranging from agent all the way up to admiral. Now, agents is basically new guys in the alliance, and they can't do an awful lot. But there's a whole list of stuff here, which goes right down here to that... Uh, these various ranks can actually do. Now, as you can see, everybody in the Alliance can basically contribute resources. We'll show you that in just a moment. The next one is um, Collect Alliance Harvester. Again, that's gonna be the star base, so you'll be able to collect things, and that can now go up to Optive. So when you actually get promoted to Optive, you can start actually helping your Alliance by going around collecting all the plasma. Yeah, okay. Now, Premier has got the next few um, bit more responsibilities. And if we move myself over a little bit, you can see what they've got. And it's everything, and it's a couple of things to do with the line space, with his repair it, or upgrade um, a module on it. Again, we'll talk about the Alliance Starbase in just a moment. But another thing is, which I think is a little bit controversial for the Premiers, in all honesty, is you can promote and demote members in the Alliance. Now, you cannot promote above your current rank so if a premier promotes somebody they can only promote an operative or an agent a commodore can promote a premier operative or agent agent and again you can't demote players you can um premiers will only be able to demote operatives and well just the operative really because agents at the bottom but a commodore can demote a premier or an operative the Admiral has the ultimate, respons um, ultimate responsibility of deciding who actually gets to be a Commodore or not. But again, we'll talk about that shortly. Um, next up, you've got Commodore, which has also got a massive string of stuff um, to work alongside the Admiral. But like I said, we will discuss that briefly. Um, they can activate services, abandon zones. That's all to do with territories. Invite uh, playover, uh, playovers. Invite players to the um, alliances, so which basically means if you see a player floating around who's not in alliance, you can actually actively invite them. Usually best to actually have a quick discussion first. Next one is join takeovers. Again, yeah, takeovers. Kick players, so if, if someone's been naughty in your alliance and you've warned them, warned them, told them no end of times, and you said, you know what, stuff you, get out. Admirals and Commodores have that right to kick anybody. Relocating the Alliance star base is another one. So basically moving it from plasma node to plasma node around the map. Uh, remove or replace Alliance consumables. So they are the XCOMs which are Alliance based. 
which I believe, now please correct me if I'm wrong, is for Ops 46 and you'll find them in your 30 day chest. I could be wrong. It might be higher than that, but I think it stands for Ops 46. And also set diplomacy, that's another one we will quickly venture into as well. Now, that's the end of the Commodore level, but again, there's a, each rank keeps doing all these that we've already mentioned. So now we're into specifically the Admiral. And to be honest, there's only three extra things. Alliance settings. Change various things about the Alliance, which we'll show you in just a moment. Enter tournament. That's the Alliance leaderboards and the Alliance milestones. Any, any event that's basically Alliance based. And transfer leadership. So, yeah. The Admiral has to transfer leadership, especially if the Admiral decides they've had enough of their Alliance and they want to leave. But again, we'll show you that one in just a moment. So, so that's the ranks, and basically the Admiral is ultimately responsible for the, uh, uh, for the Alliance. They can delegate a lot of the tasks to the Commodores, which is what a, a lot of Alliance Admirals actually do. There are alliances where they've got multiple Commodores, all responsible for individual things in the Alliance. Um, some alliances where the Admiral pretty much controls everything and says, no, my word is my word is law. I am God, accept it or get lost. So, but we, we leave those Admirals because that's the way they like to do it. Every Alliance is different. No two Alliances are the same. I will tell you that. Now, before we click on the middle button, which says create, we'll just have a quicker look at invites. Again, I don't have any. Nobody loves me. But anyway, um, any, any alliance that wishes to invite you, they've not discussed it first, can send you an invite and it will appear here. Um, I think it also appears um, in your alliance, in your chat as well as you've got um, an invite. So just watch out for them until then. Um, oh crap, I didn't mean to do that. Next up is you've got your search button. So you, if the alliance that you were looking for is not actually listed here, because not all the alliances are actually listed. You can actually search a specific alliance. Next up is the create. Now, this is the bread and butter of where you want to actually create your alliance. So, you've actually got a number of things. Across the top, you've got the alliance name. So, what do you want to call your alliance? And then a tag. Now, watch out. Because when you do actually create some of these. And we'll just throw a name in. A name in. And this is one I actually found early because I did some solo armadas. Um, do, do, do. So when I de decided to do that, I got this telling me my alliance name or tag was already in use or contains an appropriate language. Watch out for them ones. And it's usually so, so simple. So I had to go and decide to do a different thing. So what did I do? I did Polo. Anyone who knows what a Polo is, it's those nice little mints that have got a hole in the middle. So we went Polo, and obviously I called it Solo Amadas earlier. So we'll just leave it as that for now. Now, there are a couple other things. Next box is the public information. Bear in mind, you've only got 230 characters. So if you see that little number at the top of the box, that's how many characters you've got available. So what you could do here is you could just put um, certain things, a little bit of information about your alliance here. Some alliances put they follow server row, fair play, fun play, you know, this, that and the other. So yeah, just watch out for them. Next up is the public and private. Now we saw that in the previous screen where you got some alliances which are open. That's the public one. So any players can literally come and join you. Now, if you set your alliance to public, watch out. If you have a server rogue, <laughs> yeah, the chances are they may come and join your alliance under a different name if you are not monitoring them. The best way to monitor them is block a player. You can track the player's name changes. As long as you know what players you've actually got blocked, you can track their names and their various name changes. So watch out for that one because your alliance could end up being put under cost or kill on site because you've ended up taking in a row you may not have even known about it so just beware so how do you avoid that well it's simple you're going to click it to private yes you're going to call yourself a private you're going to call yourself a private alliance basically means 
they have to request permission. So as you saw on the previous board, when I clicked on the private one, it said join alliance on the bottom, but it was greyed out. So which basically means I'd have to speak with that alliance admiral or potentially one of the commodores, because sometimes they could put in the public information that if you wish to join them, you need to speak to specific players. Again, commodores being given some responsibility for certain things. Recruitment. So you just leave it, you can set it to private, Players have got to then ask you if they can come and join. Now, the next big, big, big thing. Yes, it is a massive thing. What symbol do I give my alliance? Well, if you click on edit, you've got a few. Now, we started off with literally just a few. And if we go across the top row, it was pretty much the whole top row. And the second row, if I remember correctly. And I think maybe this one and the next one on the third row is all we had and then we were given a load more now as you can see by the looks of it we've also got one with a dominion a bug something similar like that so if we and then you can just click on one of them and confirm and that's what your alliance symbol is going to be pretty simple isn't it so what do you do now well it's simple you press create that's it your alliance is now done so as you can see I'm now the proud owner of the Polo Alliance. Yes. And we've got a large number of boxes. So what do all these boxes do? They're all that you can access. Now, we mentioned Alliance Exacoms. So let's have a quick look. As you can see, your Alliance needs to be at least level 17. Woohoo! To access Alliance Exacoms. And these are the various Exacoms that you can have. So view more information. Oh, takes us over to this. So what we got here, that's the XCOM guide. So um, by all means, click on for you more information and you can actually have a look if you want to know what XCOMs are. Also, you've got the player ones as well, which is your individual ones as well. Next up, you've got your Alliance store, which basically brings up everything, everything from cow. So now we mentioned about cow, these trophies, Alliance trophies, this is where you bring them for this. And what do you want them for primarily? Well, this particular chest, yes, but it's 16,000, so bear that in mind. Now, we have got 20 hours left. That's because we're outside the cow event now. They give you an extra day. Next up is some stuff for the star base and the research tree. Then you've got a marder packs as well. Um, some directives for marders, ultra recruit tokens, some avatars, um, relocation tokens, and a whole whack of different base shields. Now, you can actually find that by going through the gift section and scrolling across the bottom to alliances. You do not necessarily to be in alliance. I will show you that in just a moment. Next up is your inventory. Again, anybody can actually check this one. This is for when you've got some territory. Um, mining, uh, refining raw isogen and progenitor alloys, which I can do in alliance. And we can show you. Um, I, you pretty much know what you're doing there. And you can get some... Um, resource bundles from the store as well so just keep an eye on that next one is rewards this is basically going to be a list of uh, alliance rewards basically anybody in your alliance who actually goes and spends some real moolah on the game there's an alliance gift inside them and basically that'll pop up here the more people who actually buy packs in the store the more um gifts actually appear here so the more active you, your alliance is at spending, the better. Next up, alliance helps. All those in your alliance can basically ask for help and it will be displayed here. Now, uh, we have the purple button on the main view screen, um, which you just click and it just says alliance help sent. It used to actually just bring you to this where you had to click all of individual ones and you can also ask for help so as you can see I, I can go here and literally just ask for help on everything now obviously nobody's going to help me because I'm on my own boom so here's the help as you can see yeah so even repairs will show up in here as well um do 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 territory now this is your territory store as you can see I don't have any territory, but I do have access to the store to buy all this. That's fine. Um, yeah. 
Next one is the combat, which is your um, threats and attacks against your alliance star base. Yeah. So if we just click on the I, uh, join your allies to defend alliance star bases from incoming assaults. You have 10 minutes to defeat all attackers before you, um, they're able to launch the assault on your star base. If you do not repel the assault in time, your alliance star base will be damaged and the plasma reserves will be stolen by the attackers. Yay! So is that going to be under the same one? No, next one. Uh, Join, blah, 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 blah. blah. Uh, our ships must, our says, this is one's way you actually attack them. Um, again, the murders are basically going to be based on who's the strongest, down to the weakest. And obviously you'll all be able to end up fighting. You've got 10 minutes to mobilize. Planning ahead is a big one. Next one is the star base. As you can see, I need to be ranked higher, Commodore or higher, just to activate the star base. But it's quite expensive to start off. Yes. So if you are planning on going it alone, bear that in mind if you actually want to use the Alliance star base. Because it is going to be very expensive on your own. Which is a downside to actually being on your own. So being in Alliance that actually does contribute is actually beneficial. So now for some... Obviously, because I haven't got the um, superconductors, I can't build the Alliance Starbase yet. But obviously, as you go, you pretty much know what the Starbase is. It's a glorified miner. Obviously, there is the second section, which is the battle section. So bear that in mind. Next up is your contributions. Now, this is for where every single player in your Alliance can contribute. It's going to cost you a certain amount. The, the middle one will sometimes flip between... Tritanium or Dilithium, so bear that in mind, it usually goes on how high your AP is. As you can see, I can literally just throw, let's see if we just do that, and boom, I'm straight up to level 2 already. Yeah, so I can just keep dropping in there, and I'm going to get it. Now, as you can see, it also tells you what the um, how many players you can have in your lines. But yeah, if you actually click on rewards, it tells you. So level 1 starts off at 30, 32 for the next, 34 for the 3, and then it just continues to get higher and higher. But it also increases the number of slots, um, helps that you can receive in your alliance as well, and the number of slots you're available to gain in territory. So as you can see, it's going to start off with, you're only allowed to claim one zone on your own. Yay! But it, then if you go to level 5, you got two sectors. Uh, level 10 is 3, 15 is 4, and then finally 12 is 5 slot, uh, five zones you can actually own. So 70 is your maximum cap, 16 helps, level 20 alliance is pretty much an average of what you'll see in the game at current. But this does continue all the way up to level 60, where I don't know why it's just done that, because I wanted the top, so we can actually read it. Um, maximum limit in your alliance is 105. Um, helps limited to 21, but again, still only five zones in your territory. So, yeah. But as you notice as well, the prices down here have also changed. So if we actually go on a little bit further, we've just gone to level three. Oh, the prices have gone up again. Yes. So they do go up and they do get more expensive as you go. So, oh, I forgot to mention, there's this little plus button. Yeah, so which means you can do that and contribute so much. So there we go. That sent me to level four already. Boom. Um, now, next up is the diplomacy. The, again, this is down to Alliance um, Commodores and Admirals. And basically, you're going to have a whole load of um, diploma diplomacies that you can actually put out there. Now, as you can see, that the... the if you set somebody to enemy, they are not going to be told. If you set them to LA, again, they're not going to be told. That's between your admirals and commodores of your alliance and the other alliance as well. So just watch out for them ones. As you can see, you've got no diplomatic status at the minute. So how would I go about sorting out diplomatic status? Well, I've actually got to go to the other alliance and actually do that. And we'll do that in just a minute. Um, again, we can also see this. As well, this will be a list of players that will be in my alliance. But being an Admiral or a Commodore, there's one extra feature as well. Online. 
Now, if you actually look along the green line, it actually says online on there because the green line will be you. Yeah, so in that case, it's me. But that will be you. And online, and obviously, it'll tell you how long somebody has not been online for. Great thing for Commodores and Admos to monitor the activity of players. And basically, if the player's been offline for too long, are you all right? Is everything okay? Um, Discord is a highly good recommendation for inter alliance uh, for alliance communications because the one thing is when you actually talk to people in the alliance in game, there's no push notification to say that somebody's message um, tagged you in a chat. Uh, there's no message. There's no push notification to tell you have a direct message, neither. So just bear that in mind. So Discord is a good one if you want to keep an eye on your um, alliance players. So it's highly recommended to get your members into a Discord channel with your alliance. Very highly recommended. Um, next one is going to be the power levels. Oh, that just takes you to here. So as you can see, apparently I'm an unknown. Don't know why it's come up with that, but that's that's um, another bug with the game. Hell how. Um, reputation points, as you all know what the reputation points is. That's your personal reputation with lines. Once you leave an alliance, it drops to zero. So no matter where you are, I was distinguished in my one, in my last alliance. That's the maximum you can go. Yeah, not anymore. I'm going to have to rebuild all that. But you'll need that for your alliance, your uh, star base research tree. Uh, next button is obviously the, the admos. You can click on see their particular details. Woohoo! Here I am. Solo. Yeah. Now, the next one is a big one, which a lot of admirals don't really use that much, is the announcement. Basically, you can put an announcement in, in here for your um, alliance to view. As you can see, mine's already appeared with the word boo. Yeah, so if you go into war with somebody, it can tell you who you're at war with, who your allies are. Yes, you've got the diplomatic status and the tags on screen to see that, but as well, yeah, so any additional information that you may be wanting to convey to your alliance. So, um, say like takeovers. There you go, put it in there. We've got a takeover today. Yeah, you'll see that if you click on this. You, you'll know you've got a takeover. It will actually come up on that button with a timer to your next takeover. So, that's alliances. Um, but that's it, really. So, alliance admirals are ultimately responsible for this. Alliance is down to them. Now, let's have a look at ending alliance. Yes, because if you remember correctly, in the ranks, the Admiral can transfer leadership. Now, as you can see, you've got um, send invites, view public profile, which is your alliance, as you can see, your alliance, or leave alliance. Now, it says also you're the only member of alliance of this alliance. This alliance will be disbanded. Do you want to disband this alliance? Yes. And boom, we're back to this screen. So now I'm no longer in alliance. Oh, who am I going to join? Well, you'll find that out on the next live stream, which will be on Saturday night for incursions. Yes. So brief mention about incursions is a put up earlier. Rev Juice has released a video. He's worked with some players from the Apex servers who are currently undergoing the incursions process right now. And yeah. The best thing I can say about that is I most likely can get a Titan like that. So Tuesday's live stream could be a Titan or I'll be releasing a video around the Titan. It'll take two days to actually put together. So there's a bonus for me. I've actually got enough coins to actually go buy it in all honesty. So, but yeah, that's it. That's how to create an alliance, really. Not, there's not, it's not that complicated, but... There it is. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Also, don't forget to join the Discord if you'd like to. Also, there are two donation links as well if you'd like to donate to the channel. All donations are greatly appreciated and my love will be sent. I am currently working towards a target of £200 at current, but that's building towards a PC. So we're starting off with a low target. But once we hit that target, I will increase that target to say, right, okay, can we get this now? Can we reach this? So that's how I'm going to be doing my donations, uh, donation targets. 
remember it is all to the channel it is aimed at improving this channel so any donations if you wish to make them please i do appreciate it um that's it i'm just looking at my sheet and i can't see anything else that i need to say yes i actually wrote a script out so okay points of reference but yeah so that's it really that's alliances let me know what you think until then i need to hop off and edit this video and then um yeah chill so i'll see you all on saturday i'm admiral pegasus this is the pegasus show saying stay safe live long and prosper and i'll see you on saturday goodbye <laughs>